Your parents, Deb and Chip, love this car. In fact, every boomer does because boomers love expensive stuff because they're the only people who have any freaking money these days. You know who else has money? Freaking James Bond, the original cool guy, and he gave up his Aston Martin for one of these. It was probably the best example of modern retro ever made. So stick around because in this episode, we're gonna find out how BMW plotted to make an instant classic from the very beginning. <laughs> This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the BMW Z8. What? Oh, Z8? Oh yeah, that makes more sense. Z8! I'm just kidding, I'm shooting this in my garage. There's no one here. Cue to music. <laughs> I want to give a big shout out to this week's sponsor. Thanks a lot, Vita Goods. As a lot of you guys know, I had a heart scare about six months ago. I had a heart attack. Because of that, I've made a lot of lifestyle changes, including exercise and my diet. And it's hard staying healthy in a time like this. You can't really go outside that much. And you gotta cook all the food that's in your house. So thanks to the Vita Goods Digital Body Analyzer, I know my body better than ever and I can keep track of it in the way that I need to. And this thing is not just a scale, it does so much more than that. It can tell me my weight, which is important, my body fat percentage, my muscle mass, and even my bone density, which I don't necessarily need to know for my heart, but I do like knowing how many bones I have. It's super easy to use, it doesn't take up much space, it looks just like a scale, and it does so much more than just weigh me. Take it from me. This is a lot easier than I thought. If you look at old videos of me, I was soaking wet and sweating in every episode. Now, the only reason I'm sweating is because uh, I'm shooting in my garage and it's 120 degrees in here. And I want you guys to get healthier, so there's a link down in the description below. You can get a digital body analyzer like mine for 60% off. The discounts for stuff in our sponsorships usually aren't this much. These guys are really hooking it up. Thanks a lot, Vita Goods. And guys, let's get healthy together. Now back to the show. The story of one of BMW's most unique cars starts with one of its biggest failures. And lucky for us, that didn't stop them from taking another crack at it. It was based on a 40 year old car and even now at 20 years old, it still literally does not look dated at all. BMW planned to turn it into a modern collector's car all along. So how did they pull that off? Now the original idea for this car had been bouncing around BMW for a while. So in 1993, the BMW board was in Saint-Tropez. The head of the board, Eberhard von Kuhnheim, was about to retire. So all of his buddies brought BMWs from each of the years that he had worked there. One guy though, the head of development, brought a BMW 507, which technically wasn't from one of those years. But the 507 turned out to be everyone's favorite car to drive. And this group of guys was the board of BMW, so they were allowed to tell BMW what to make. So they decided, hey, we should make a modern version of this. So they left San Tropez and went back to Germany and told the head of design to get his department started on drawing up some concept car ideas. That head of design was Chris Bangle. And when he asked his team who wanted to do it, a dude named Henrik Fisker raised his hand. Um. Now you've probably heard of both Bangle and Fisker. Yeah, that Fisker. And we're gonna get into the Z8, it's a pretty cool story, but before we get into that, we have to understand this beautiful 507 that inspired the board members to have it drawn up. And to do that, we have to go back in time. The 507 was one of the most beautiful and unsuccessful BMWs ever made. In 1954, a dude named Max Hoffman, who was a luxury importer in New York, saw a gap in the sports car market. He thought that there was room for something new between MGs and Triumphs and the pricier Mercedes 300 SL. So he somehow convinced BMW to build a car. 
Albrecht von Gertz designed the curvy, hand-formed aluminum body, and 11 of them got handmade removable hardtops. Now, the tops are so unique to each car that they can't be put on one another. They only fit the car they were built to. They look incredible. They had double wishbone front suspension and a 3.2 liter V8 under the hood in 1954. How is this not a huge success? It's like I always say, man. Mo money, mo problems. Good day, some sugar. The new sports car was projected to cost $5,000 in 1956, and BMW thought they'd sell 5,000 of them per year, but it was twice as expensive to build as they expected, and it ended up going on sale for $10,000 instead. That's almost 90 grand today, and it was a much tougher sell back then. BMW only built 252 of them over four years and lost money on every single one. Several famous people had 507s, but unfortunately, it didn't really help BMW sell enough of them. Elvis Presley drove two BMW 507s. When he was stationed in Germany with the US Army, he leased a used white one with a hard top, the same one racing legend Hans Stuck had actually raced. Now, Elvis actually thought that he was buying the car, not just leasing it, but he couldn't read the German paperwork and no amount of swiveling hips would change BMW's minds about the lease contract he signed. Anyway, 507s are super rare and now they sell for millions and millions of dollars at fancy auctions. So when Henry Fisker started designing a new interpretation of the 507, he had some pretty big shoes to fill. The modern retro styling fad was just about to take off and we all know those turned out pretty hit or miss. But when you're starting out with a classic sports car shape, it shouldn't be hard to not mess it up. And he didn't mess it up, like at all. I mean, this is the guy who went on to design the Aston Martin V8 Vantage and the Fisker Karma. So. I think he knew a thing or two about drawing pretty cool cars. Just like buff ones. Just look at that car and look at that car. They're both just muscly, muscly, look like, like a sexy bulldog. The BMW Z07 concept stuck with the classic long hood and short rear deck. With the driver sitting closer to the rear wheels than the front, it stayed true to the 507's design while also looking fresh and unique in its own way. So you won't be shocked to hear that it was a huge hit at the 97 Tokyo Motor Show, mostly with the press and old dudes, I'm guessing, probably. It didn't have a lot of the wild one-off concept car stuff that never makes it past the auto show circuit. So it looked very likely that the concept and the real thing would be very similar. Prototypes were spotted testing for years before it came out. <laughs> Engineers ran them with Porsche 911 cabriolets on the Nürburgring. Remember those old paper books car lovers used to read in the 90s while dropping a deuce? Um, magazines, right. They thought that a coupe version might get made, but product planners thought that a roadster would be more popular. When the production Z8 came out for the year 2000, just about the only things that didn't carry over from the concept car were the hump behind the driver and the double bubble hardtop. Double bubble 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 bubble. Now even the split five spoke wheel design hardly changed, but the ultimate endorsement came directly from the 507's original designer. Mr. Arbrecht von Goat said that if he designed the new car, it would have looked just like the Z8. BMW freaks immediately lost their pants and couldn't wait to get their hands on one. Q's not gonna like this. For maximum publicity, BMW managed to get James Bond out of an Aston Martin and into a Z8. The 19th 007 film, The World Is Not Enough, came out around the same time as the new car. Convenient, but it had to be shot way earlier than the car's launch. So a bunch of pre-production Z8 replicas were made out of fiberglass and had Chevy 350 V8 crate motors. A fiberglass Z8 with an LS in it? Doesn't sound not cool. 
The real Z8 came with a 4.9 liter S62 V8 that had recently debuted in the new M5 with Vanos variable valve timing, German VTEC, 394 very logical German horsepower and 368 town feet of twerks. It was the most powerful engine BMW had ever put in a streetcar. And now it was in a two seater that weighed way less than the sedan. That meant it was a bit quicker. It even turned out to be a bit quicker than the Ferrari 360 Modena. You had no choice but to roll your own gears because a six-speed manual was the only transmission that you could get, and they all had an LSD. BMW didn't compromise anywhere on the Z8. Convertibles can normally feel kind of floppy compared to coupes and sedans, but the Z8 was filled with 187 total feet of fully welded seams and a thousand rivets. That made it two times stiffer than any other convertible sold at the time. <laughs> body and the chassis were both aluminum and the body panels bolted on so they'd be easy to fix you know if it got chopped in half every car also came with a removable aluminum hardtop that was designed to look more like it actually belonged on the car not just a goofy metal hat the taillights and turn signals weren't LEDs, but they were neon tubes. Even the white backup light was somehow disguised behind a red lens when it was off to keep the rear end looking symmetrical. Guys, I'm a fan of taillights. I own one project car and I have four sets of taillights for it. And they didn't stop at the exterior because the interior was designed by Scott Lempert to look super clean and vintage. BMW engineers came up with clever ways to hide or combine controls. All of the gauges were in the center so they wouldn't distract the driver from their view of the road. When you bought a Z8, you got a lot for your money, but you also had to spend a lot of your money. They started at 129K and went up from there, not because of extra options, but because dealers marked them up. If the Z8 was on sale today, it would cost 195 grand. You can get a Porsche 911 that performs better in every way for less than that now, but it just doesn't have that same air of exclusivity that the Z8 still does. Everyone knew they were going to be collectible from the start. A low production roadster with a big V8 and a stick shift from the legendary German manufacturer? It was a no brainer. On the used market, they've never dropped much below $70,000 and now you can barely find one for less than 150. The Z8 was a limited production run with 5,703 cars made over four years. This thing man. A sporty, luxurious German roadster with tons of horsepower? Hell yeah, when I get to be an old man and have a bunch of money, sign me the frick up. The Z8 Forum is full of old dudes geeking out about their cars with tons of super long-winded posts, production info, pictures, and links to old car reviews. They're the future versions of all of us, and we totally used it to research this episode, so thanks, old guys. For their final year of production, the Z8 became the Alpina Roadster V8. BMW sent 555 Roadsters over to their famous tuning friends at Alpina for customization. Now Alpina is usually known for kicking things up a few notches, but this time they respected the car and didn't go too crazy. Now originally it was rumored that these cars were gonna have a V12 put into them, but the V12 wouldn't fit. Guy! Never heard anything sadder in my freaking life. So the M5 engine was replaced with the 4.8 liter M62 V8 from the X5 SUV. Alpina bumped it up to 375 horsepower, which was actually about 20 horsepower less than the original Z8, but they also gave it more torque. It made 15 more pound feet and it kicked in in lower revs too. The extra low end grunt suited the Roadsters better since they were mostly used as Grand Tours and not pure sports cars. Another thing that was better suited to the GT Cruising was an automatic. So the six speed manual was ditched for a manually shifted five speed auto. Maybe that's why the US got 450 of the 555 Alpinas, but less than half of the regular Z8s, because we like automatics, I guess. They added 
huge 20 inch wheels with Alpina's signature multi-spoke design and the suspension was softened for a more relaxing ride. You know, for those old man backs. The Roadsters were sold through BMW dealers for 137 grand, making it the first time Alpinas were officially available in North America. And today, they usually sell for around $200,000. Now as a halo car, the BMW Z8 was a remarkable one. Can you imagine how the BMW i8 is gonna age compared to the Z8? Hey guys, we've worked really hard in the past to provide you with a bunch of really cool shirt options, this one included, but up until this point, I wanna apologize because we've left your legs out of the mix. Out of the mix. And I don't wanna leave anyone out of the mix. We're all about community here. So starting now, we have Donut, I do, how do you switch in regular cube? Sweatpants. They're so new that I don't even have a pair. These are really high quality. We spent the extra dough on them um, and they're comparable to like our hoodies, um, but they're for your legs. They say PE, which stands for performance education. I know it's very funny and very cool. I came up with it myself. They're great in the car. They're great to sit around and play Zelda, ask my girlfriend, uh, and they're great to, you know, sit in your garage at your workbench uh, and do conference calls and make videos alone. <laughs> ask me how I know. Go to donutmedia.com, cop yourself some. I can't wait to wear mine. I can't wait to see all your pretty little buns wearing yours. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Up to Speed. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell. It's the best way for us to know that we're doing well and you'll be notified every time we upload a new video. That is very helpful now. We have a show every day of the week now on Donut and I host three of them, baby. We have new merch available now. Boost Creep shirts are live. This is the coolest shirt we've ever made. Make sure to follow Donut at Donut Media across social media. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at James Pumphrey. I love you.